What's going on guys? Welcome back. It has been a while since I've posted a video, four months to be exact, and I apologize for that, but I got a good reason. So I had set up to winter bow hunt, some land we had permission to hunt on, and we had our feeder set up, we had our stands in place, and in early fall, Vito and Pat each took a seven and a 10 pointer out of our, so it was looking real promising for a great winter of bow hunting. But we started having trespassers messing with our stuff, messing with our feeders, messing with our stands, and we couldn't good conscious leave our stuff out there and be set up the way we like to set up for hunting in that spot. So we had to pull everything out, kind of reevaluate, check to see if there's anything we can do to kind of prevent that from happening again. So that kind of messed my plans up for, for filming this winter. And I pivoted to a project instead. So in the early part of my channel, when you saw me building the whaler, the first, I don't know, maybe five to six videos i'm in this portable vinyl or you know garage one of those you know you put the you know the the vinyl covers over the frame and it's you know you can take it down put it up when you need to i had bought that just to keep the whaler out of the weather so i can sand and prep and leave some tools on it and not have to put everything away one of my biggest issues has been organizing myself as far as tools and projects go even fishing and boating equipment i have had stuff stored everywhere Here's a tip for you guys. Never buy a house without a garage. Biggest mistake I made. But I built a shed in 19, but that rapidly became a gym. Uh, when they shut down the gyms during COVID, I had built a shed and that was originally gonna be a workshop, but then it rapidly turned into a gym. I used it for a while during the core months of the pandemic. And then when the gyms finally opened up, I started going back to the gym regularly. It's a part of my daily ritual. I wake up every morning, I go to the gym, I work out. I try to take good care of myself so I could keep this outdoor lifestyle going forever. But then my son took the gym over and that's pretty much his man cave and he is in there a lot training. He is, you know, he's a competitive athlete and he wants to keep himself in top physical condition. My daughter goes in there and works out so she can keep fit to do what she loves to do. And it is really just a gym now with my fishing rod stored on the roof of it. So that left me with an old dilapidated 10 by 12 shed that I built with my brother back in like 05. It served its purpose, but I outlived it. It was small, it was stuffed, and finding things was so hard. So I needed to make an improvement, a massive improvement. So since the hunting fell by the wayside, I decided to make my winter about a project, which was one I couldn't film like I did the whaler. The whaler was great. I could do step-by-step -step videos of everything I was doing, which really is how this channel started. I originally wanted to keep video vlogs of the progress of my whaler for my own records, but I wound up uploading to YouTube because my phone had asked me if I wanted to, and I did, and the response was great, and I grew a little bit of an audience, and all of a sudden it got bigger, and you guys started commenting, and the channel kind of was born that way, and now you saw the whaler go from project to now I use it. I mean, it's sitting over there, covered, ready to go, batteries charged, and I'm ready to head out and do that. But today, I wanna to show you what I've been working on all winter long. I built, I had a new shed put on, I didn't build it. I had it put on a lot. I did build the site it sits on, and I had to keep it a certain size so my tax implication wouldn't be so big and my permit process would be way easier. So I kept it under 200 square foot and I wound up putting a 12 by 16 workshop shed on my lot and let me tell you something it has changed everything i love it i've done about five to six projects already where it's been super smooth i haven't walked all over the place trying to find stuff that's in my storage unit in my friend's garage up the street buried in the old shed where i'll move everything out to get to it and then five boxes fall on my head as i try to find what i'm looking for and then i find out oh it's not here it's over there it's just not how to work so this has changed it all because everything's come back here. I know where it all is. And now if I got to work on the boats, work on the cars, work on the house, and all those things need work, I got a place to start my project, get it organized, get what I need, and get out and do the job. So 
So this is the pad that I poured and it is 16 feet by 20 feet. Basically gives me a two foot section around the entire building when the new building gets here. And that should be here today. And I will finally have a nice new shed. Today is about three things. It is about my new shop, which is what I've been doing all winter, launching the sailfish, and I'm gonna do a quick little recipe that I've wanted to do on this channel since I did the last recipe. It's my Captain Crunch Crusted Striped Bass Filet. We're gonna cook that up for you guys, show you how I do that to finish up this video. So basically this is a launch, clean and cook day, and I'm showing you where I've been, and we're back, because after today, the sailfish is gonna be in the water, the whaler's ready to go, just gonna wait on weather if it ever stops raining. We're gonna get out and catch some fish. So let's go take a quick tour of the inside of this shed so I can show you how awesome it is to have a place to do work. So here we are, quick little 360 of the 12 by 16 shed. That is the workbench. It is covered with stuff, as you can see, because it's the stuff I said earlier was all coming home to the house. As you can see, I have tons of room to work. Lots of room. That is my cover for the sailfish. That's going back to Fisher Canvas. And guys, if you don't know, Fisher Canvas products, which are located in Burlington, New Jersey, they have a website, fishercanvasproducts.com. You should check that site out. I'm gonna move where the light is a little bit better, sorry. Um, that canvas cover came with my boat, and I gotta be honest with you, I have saved so much money in shrink wrap fees using my canvas cover. You've all seen it in the videos before, or you might have seen it when I did the video last year when I had the boat covered. If not, I'll try to get some photos up of what it looks like covered, but it is a custom fit cover for my 23 Sailfish. And they come and pick it up for $150. They come pick up my cover, they bring it back to their facility in Burlington, which is about an hour and change from where I live. They treat it, they address any issues, they call me, they say, look, you know, it costs a little bit more if we gotta put new reinforcement pads on it, maybe sew up some holes. I saved tons of money. I know it costs north of $500 to shrink wrap my sailfish. So I don't have to do that. When it comes home, I cover it, and this year, when I got it ready, I left the cover on right up until a couple of days ago. I tucked it inside the hull when I sanded, waxed, and painted, and all that stuff. So it, it just was out of the way, and then I just folded it over the hull, tied it down very loosely, and waited for them to get ready to come. And I knew they were coming today, so I pulled it off a couple of days ago, gave it a quick little hose down, and everything's ready to go. I didn't have to go through what I went through last year with getting rid of the sticks, the leaves, and all the nonsense that gets in my boat. So Fisher Canvas Products, great, great, great company, super friendly people, the, ser the customer service is outstanding. So Fisher Canvas Products, I'm gonna leave a description in the link below and also here on the screen. So as you can see, I have my workbench. I built the workbench. It did not come with a workbench. Uh, the, this black Husky chest was in my gym forever, which is the other shed that's behind the sailfish now. And this white one I picked up when I bought the shed to match it, to leave the area in the middle open, which I keep my carpenter tools. So I could sit here, work on things. I have a place to work. Right now, what you're seeing on it though, it's filled with all of my canned and uh, other stuff that I use. All my products are either lubrication or cleaning or whatever it is. I, I have some stuff here, as you can see, I got my, my West system from when I was working on the whaler. I've got my Gorilla Glue, I've got all kinds of fuel stabilizers and oils and lubrications. Over here I keep most of my tools. None of this is going to stay the way it is. 
So none of this will stay as it is right now. Everything is just landing here right now. I don't have anything permanently organized. I'll do a video when it's completely set up the way I want because so uh, it's awesome. It's a life. It's a game changer for me here at the house, and it's gonna make my life. It's already made my life a ton easier. I've probably done ten things around the house or projects that I've had to to get done, and I've been able to come out here, get what I need, go inside, do it, walk it back out. I mean, I changed the oil in my truck the other day. Everything was in here, boom, got it done. And like half the time I was getting it done prior because I'd spend so much time looking for stuff. And if you're out there going through the same thing, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this was something I've been wanting to do. And since hunting fell by the wayside this winter, we focused on this, got it done, and it's perfect. Let's go move the boat. Okay, and there she is. She is all ready to go. She is clean, she is painted, she is compound waxed. All I have to do now is get underneath this boat when he lifts it up and get all the areas where the stands are. But of course I'm standing out in a misty rain today. So we're gonna have to work in the rain, so. Woo, and just like that we're launched. I'll tell you, it's really, really windy out here, so this is gonna be a trick getting it in a slip. We're blowing at a, probably 20, and that always seems to be the case. So here we are again, but let's see if we can get this done. No damage, but it is blowing me around pretty damn good. Motor fired right up, as expected, and uh, all systems look good. So we'll get it in a slip, and then we'll go from there. I'm gonna get in going, pushing against the wind, so hopefully I'll have you know, pretty good control of the boat. Not ideal conditions to launch a boat in, but when it's go time, it's go time, so. That's that. We are in. Whew. All right, season has begun. I'm cold, I'm wet, and I'm hungry. Let's go home, make something in the kitchen. So we're back from the boat, we're in the kitchen now, and I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ways to cook striped bass. It is a Captain Crunch crusted striped bass filet. Gonna bake it in the oven, about 15 to 20 minutes, but we'll get to that part in a minute. I'm gonna show you what I have, how I prepare it. It's a very simple, but very good and tasty way to eat your catch. So, for starters, I have, I have my eggs, which will go in this bowl, and that will be what I soak my fillets in. I have a plastic bag. I have a plastic bag of Captain Crunch. What I'm gonna do is take this rolling pin, I'm gonna roll it all over that, crush it up into a nice fine powder, and I have what I what I have here is vacuum sealed striped bass from October 25th of last year from one of my trips. So this all together will be crusted and placed into this Pyrex pan. I've got some baking paper on the bottom of it so the, the fillets can lay on that and they will bake in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. So let's get that all prepared for you and I'll show you how it all comes together. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mash all this up. Thank you. 
And you want to get it nice and fine. You really don't want it chunky. You just want to kind of like a breadcrumb consistency. And just like that, you have yourself some nice Captain Crunch crust. Okay. We're going to take that and we're going to pour it. We're going to use this big white plate so you can spread it out a little bit. Okay, and there you have your crust. Very similar to panko breadcrumbs or something along those lines if you're into, you know, doing that, which I do. I love my fish with a nice crust on it. So now take these eggs and this will be my wash. Okay. Now these aren't big fillets, so I don't have to, you know, have that much of the wash. Okay. And basically get these out of the package. Now, very simply, it's a one, two, three step process here. Okay. I got my Pyrex dish with parchment paper on the bottom. Okay. Got my wash, my crust, and my pan. So basically one step, two step, three step, in the oven number four not difficult at all so we will get that nice and okay and we'll you know don't be shy with it let it have a nice thick crust okay and there's one this is so easy to do and it tastes so good this Captain Crunch will caramelize while it bakes, giving it a nice crunchy, sweet flavor. You don't even need to really season the meat. I don't. I just do this. I don't season it. I just go straight in with this. And it is amazing. Smells good already. Okay, and then a little extra on the top just to give it a little bit more of that crunchy crust. Okay, okay what you're left with is three fillets crusted in Captain Crunch. And now in the oven it goes. Got my oven preheated. Got the oven preheated to 425. And basically, just take it, put it in there. About 15, 20 minutes, come back, see what we got. Okay, it has been about 20 minutes. And that is what we are looking like. And that is what you get. And that smells as good as it looks. All right, well, I'm at the table now. We got it out of the oven, did a little quick little taste. It is really good. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I got here. So, so you have this nice thicker piece, which I pulled apart. Nice and hot. My dog's crying to go out. All right, so here goes. Captain Crunch, crusted, striped bass. Yeah. It's everything I thought it was and more. So simple to make, so tasty. You know, if you have kids that, you know, are a little off on fish. I'm fortunate that mine are not. My daughter loves fish. My son likes it. He'll eat it. But my daughter loves it. My wife loves it. 
I obviously love it. Um, but when you can go out and fish, and you know, obviously, you don't want to overfish. You want to, you know, catch what you should catch, and store it and take care of it. You can take out a package months later and cook up something this good. Yeah, that gets me pumped up for the season. It's been a long winter. Um, again, with plan A going by the wayside and, you know, getting the shop done, which obviously it's a blessing in disguise. That was it was so important to get done. I am in, you know, just I'm over the moon about being able to find all of my stuff. I mean, I own like three or four things of, you know, of a lot of stuff in there because I couldn't find it. I'd go buy it and then I'd have like now I have four. You know, and it's just a waste of money, time, and effort. So it's so much nicer to work more efficiently and have, like, basically a headquarters to start all the projects that I really like to do. And it's going to help me film and do it better than I was when I started. Um, when I started filming the Whaler videos, you know, I was doing it in that, that portable garage, you know, take it up, put it down thing. But those things are susceptible to bad weather. They're, it did leak. There was times where some of the stuff got wet, you know. If I did behind the scenes footage, you'd, you'd hear me walking out in the morning, you know, WTF, what, you know, and cleaning up a mess and then getting ready to film because you want to be able to redo something and have it be done right. So it, it was a big improvement that needed to be done. So I was glad I made the most out of my winter, even though my plan was to hunt more. But we're going to be back fishing, making more videos, doing more recipes in the videos. You seem to like them. I did it the one time uh, on the Striper video back from last year. If you haven't watched it, check it out. Stripe Ass on the Solo Troll, where I went out by myself. It was an impromptu trip. Did real well uh, trolling around mojos and umbrellas. And I kept my, my one slop fish, brought it home, cooked it up, did a recipe. And you guys seem to like it. I got a lot of good feedback on it. And hopefully you guys will try this and drop a comment and let me know how you did with it. It's not hard. It's simple. I try to make stuff that's simple and easy for people to, to do. And uh, it's a lot of fun to learn how to make your catch taste great. So I appreciate you watching, guys. Sorry for the absence, but we're back. And we're going to be hitting it hard. So stay tuned for more because here we go. All right, guys. 2024 season is now underway. Thanks for watching, guys. And for all the support I got during the absence because there was a lot. I mean, we had a lot of people sign up as subscribers. I appreciate that. It just really makes me want to get out and do this more and more and more. And I got a big announcement coming up in May. An enormous, life-changing announcement. But you're going to have to wait for May for me to tell you about it. It's big, and you won't want to miss it. So, guys, thanks for watching. Drop a like. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the bell. And subscribe so you, know, you get notified every time we upload. Hey, guys. This is my second season filming. Looking forward to it. Hope we're going to even get better at it. I bought a drone. You're going to get some aerial footage of what we do. Hopefully give you different angles, different perspectives. And we're going to get out and have a good time. Thanks for watching. See you guys on the next one.